the next thing we're going to review about is the quantum numbers because as you will see later on we would be able to use this for some topics and uh, generally there are four the first one is the principal and it would uh, describe the valence and uh, the core energy levels so this would talk about the energy levels so the outermost energy level would be called as the valence now the next would be the azimuthal this is going to talk more about the shape of a particular orbital so for example we have a uh, the s we we know that we have the spdf right and uh, we're going to talk about s and p all of the time in organic chemistry uh, this is the shape of the s orbital it's uh it's a simple sphere s and the p is actually this one it looks like a dumbbell and uh, the, the difference is that in s no matter how you rotate it it would always look like that but in p if you rot rotate it it can look like this and this would make some kind of sense later on uh, when we review the topic of pi and sigma bonds the next would be the magnetic quantum number this would uh, give you the number of electrons or slots for electrons in a particular azimuthal quantum number so here we are going we we should recall the hans rule which means that which says that for example in this valence shell you go singly first among the orbital or among the slots here per azimuthal quantum number then that's the time where where you fill them so that doesn't make sense until perhaps like i draw it so first the thing the first thing you have to do is you fill up the s then when you go to the p since there are more than one slot there is more than one slot you go through them first then you fill them up after to avoid to avoid repulsion of electrons because we know that here per pair of electron has a particular spin and here one of them has a positive one half spin and the other one is negative one half spin hence cancelling each other so they won't repel because remember they are both electrons they're supposed to repel but since they have an additional spin property which are uh, contradictory to each other they would be able to go together now we would go on about the topic of uh, pi and sigma bonds so as a general uh, description that we always use the sigma bond is supposed to be stronger whereas the pi bond all right, this is the symbol of the sigma bond and this is the symbol of the pi pi bond is supposed to be weaker and uh, let's try to rationalize why so we say that sigma for sigma we use a head we have a head-on collision and it would look something like this if you have two s orbitals they would uh, collide head to head that's like that's why it's head-on to form this uh, molecular orbital all right so molecular molecule because uh, the two electro uh, the two atoms or elements have combined so this is a molecular orbital and this is supposed to be strong because look at the point they merged is a lot the area is big so it should be strong because they are bonded really tightly no? unlike for example we have a pi this is only a side to side collision this is you cannot have this with the uh, s orbitals because they have no what you call a side the ones where you have a side are probably look at this this is a pi bond you you can say that this part the, the part here and uh, here are the side parts of the pi bond so if you merge them together like this what do you get you get something like this and this is the only part where they merge so it's kind of small so it should be weaker 
as compared to this one wherein the area of fusion is large or the area where they combine is large although pi bonds can have also a head-on collision like this and uh, this this will resort, dissolve into something like this and uh, this would be a sigma bond okay so we get from here that s orbitals can only have sigma bonds because they always collide head on whereas for p for the p orbitals they can collide sigma to form a sigma bond or they can go side to side to form a pi bond all right